Hello, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to mine and Lindy's channel. Hello, Lindy. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Lindy with Lindy's Magpie Reads. I'm your f um, fairy booktube godmother. You sure are. Yeah. Yes, it's thanks to you that I started my own channel. I get blamed for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lindy and I are... Um, the, I don't know that it, two people could be have a more intimate friendship based on books than we have. And part of that intimacy is expressed by uh, giving books back and forth to each other. And uh, I'm very blessed that Lindy is the kind of voracious reader that, unlike most other readers in the world, she doesn't really hang on to stuff. I Even would be if, buried in books if I did that. Yes, well, I soon will be, so I understand. <laughs> um, and so often it's the books that she loves the most that I end up getting from her, and uh, how lucky am I? So this the, this video is me uh, returning the favor in, in passing on books, but I'm a hoarder, so I only give her my rejects. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> books that I bailed on or didn't didn't like well enough that I don't need to keep them on the shelf. Plus, I've got a couple surprises that I just I picked up for her you know, along the way. So that's what this video is going to be about. And we talked about the fact that she doesn't really remember, you know, I'd ask her on Voxer, I don't want to keep this one. Are you interested? And she'd say yes or no, but she, you don't remember what books you said you wanted. So it's still going no. to be a bit of a surprise. So mm -hmm. it'll be fun. There's the first one. Days of Afrikeet. Vasily Solomon. Yes. <laughs> I don't remember. It was one that I checked and it was on your TBR. And I said, do you have this one already? And you said, no. And it's, uh, it seemed to be a little too political f for my tastes, um, but it's an African-American right. writer. Yeah. FBI is warning that there could be char corruption charges. Right. And so it's that kind of a story, but it's inspired by Mrs. Dalloway, Sula, and Zami by Audre Lorde. So. Okay. I liked all three of those books. Yes. All three of them. So, so if we can trust the copywriter, which I don't usually, but <laughs> it's, it could be a Lindy book. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And this is one that I, it wasn't on your Goodreads TBR, but I know we've talked about this writer. So it's still possible that you've read this book, but I'm taking a chance. Is this short stories? Yes. Ah, okay. Um, I have read many of Mavis Gallant's short stories. I can't remember which collections. It's actually been quite a while yes. since I've read any. Show the book. <laughs> Here it is. Home, Home Truths. Truth. This is a really nice it is edition. Nice, McClellan yes. and Stewart. It was Gallant. Yeah. And I believe this is the one that is set. These stories are all set in Canada. It's one of her only collections. That... Oh, okay. I know for sure I did not read oh, this. Oh, good. And I have I've mostly read her um, stories that are set in France. Expatriate. Yes, with maybe one set in Canada. Yeah. So, this oh, is the this... one, so. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Very happy. Mavis Gallant is my, my, I think she's the best short story writer in the world, but that's very arguable. And I often, depending on what kind of a day I'm having, I'll go back and forth between her and Alice. Alice Monroe. But, but Mavis <laughs> Gallant is not nearly as well known. So anything I can do to to put her in you, you all's face you know, on my videos, I will do. But that's, uh, that's yeah. Mavis Gallant. Yeah. I, I think I told you about this great play about Mavis Gallant at the end of her life that I saw at the Vancouver Writers Fest. Is that by the CBC guy? Mm-hmm, uh, Richardson. Because it's also a, a, in podcast form. That would make or was sense. That a, or is that a separate thing he did? But what is no. his name? What is his name? Bill... Uh, Bill Richardson. Bill Richardson. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was a staged reading as opposed to in play yeah. format. So it would work really well a as a podcast. Yeah. If I can find information about the podcast, it'll be in the show notes as well. Or I guess you're doing the show notes. So I'll leave that to you. <laughs> if I can find if, information, yeah. I will put it in the show notes. I, I, can, I can help you with that. This is another one that I was surprised that you wanted because I've never heard you express interest in this series of books or this, this um, this corner of my bookish interests. Hmm. But you expressed interest in this one. Oh, yes. Yoked with a Lamb. 
by Molly Clavering. Clavering. Molly Clavering. Scottish novelist in the mid 20th century. Um, I'm more interested in those mid century novels that are set in Scotland mm. than in England for some reason. That's uh, fair enough, yeah. And I know that uh, Marilyn Meyer Mendoza is a fan of this writer because she did a bite sized book chat with me about another of Molly Clavering's novels. Yeah, and look at this quote from the Daily Mirror Teacups clinked in delightful scandal spreading. Okay. Yeah, when there are, there'll be times when this is exactly what I'm in the mood for. I'm really happy to have that Very one good. too. And, and, and if people that, that don't know, this is. Uh, these are reprinted by Dean Street Press, and their imprint for these books is just the best name for an imprint or a publishing company in the world, Furled Middlebrow. <laughs> I've never read anything. No, I furled, didn't know. Furled Middlebrow imprint. So. They're very hit and miss for me, but I have a dear, deeply loved many of them. So, um, here is one that uh, I think you'll be interested in it. I loved it, but I'm. It, it had more relevance for me. But the things I loved about it, you love in general. So that's my little introduction to this one. Courting Saskatchewan by David Carpenter. My old prof. Yeah. So a celebration of winter feasts, summer loves, and rising brookies. I believe that's a, a type brookie? of, I think it's a fish, but I, I forgot. Oh, already. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that is a kind of fish, that's right. Like brook trout. This, maybe, yeah, yeah. That part didn't stick with me. But, <laughs> but it's a, lots of nature writing and uh, it's funny and it's, uh, I loved all that and loved learning more about David Carpenter because he was my prof. Um, that that part might be lost on you, but I think that there's a lot of the, that you really yeah. connect with. Yeah, um, this type of personal essay writing and nature writing is definitely up my alley. Yes, and now and I've... and the the Saskatchewan tie it won the Saskatchewan Book Award. It did, and did it happen to be signed? It is for Jenny. No, it's Lindy. Just bad handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Um, and Thank there's, you, Sean. there's one of his poems about winter, uh, February in Saskatchewan, that I read on my channel, if you remember. But if you, you, if you don't remember, it's in the book. Yeah. Um, poetry is something that I like to read over and over again. So, so yes, I, I vaguely remember I vaguely hearing remember. you I only read vaguely it. remember it, too, but <laughs> it was the only, probably the only poem he ever wrote, I think. So that certainly struck a chord for me in February. Uh, the next one is translated German autofiction. Okay, I don't remember this one I'm at all. all. No. Um, this, uh, I think you're going to like it. Um, I didn't end up liking it very much, but it's autofictional uh, uh, narrative about the author's grandmother, Swabian, Swabian grandmother, that part mm -hmm. of Germany, who got pregnant during the war and uh, never revealed to anyone who the father was and raised the author's mother as a single mother. And other than that, she and, and then really didn't speak about anything, like she was one of the quietest people on the planet. And so it's a memoir about growing up in such a silent, secretive household with a grandmother that other than saying, get your hands off the table, get your elbows off the table or something, or you should pray more, really didn't ever speak. Huh. Didn't ultimately hold my interest, but I think it might you. It does. Uh, it does interest me. I see that uh, Katie Derbyshire translated is the, the translator, and Sophie Hughes, is who's also a, a translator, yes. gives her a blurb. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I expected a work far more for you. Yeah. Mm. This is mm -hmm. from V and Q Books, that published translated German fiction and were books translated German literature, and uh, um, the Peacock is from the same publisher that I had loved. It was a comic story told about a set in Scotland by a German writer. <laughs> wow. Well, she's uh, Sandra Hoffman, the author, is younger than both of us. Ah, uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> she is, she is. We're not going to say what year she was born, but oh, she's yes, younger she's than both of us. Just a smidge. <laughs> Do you remember this one? That's a new release. Yes, yes. Okay, Western Lane, like Chetnamaru. Chet Ooh. 
and that is virtually on red because I did it pretty much on audio. Oh. I rarely refer to the book, so it's brand new. So the protagonist is 11. Yep. And she's a squash player. Well, which you see her on the cover. Yes. Here. Uh, and on the back, it calls it a tone poem. A tone poem. Well, it's, I, I, that's, that's a metaphor. I think it, it reads as prose narrative. It's beautifully written. I loved the writing. I just oh. felt it withheld too much from me as a reader that I just ultimately didn't work. But I still was interested in it. And I like books that withhold a lot. I like novels that make me work and think a lot. And I'm a lazy SOB, <laughs> so. <laughs> there's a, there's oh, no, uh, this, this really, really sounds good to me. I think you're gonna like it. Yeah. And the last one. Do you remember requesting this one? Yes, this is the best title, Old Lady Voice. Yes, yeah, it's all voice. downhill from there it's for me, although I didn't dislike it. Uh, I just didn't really like it that much. Elisa Victoria, translated by Charlotte from Woodle. Spanish. Old Lady Voice. Um, uh, I did a, a Zoom discussion about this novel with Bernie Lombardi, and uh, he liked it a bit better than I did. We had an interesting discussion about it, but it wasn't a book that I needed to keep. And mm -hmm. it's about a mother and grandmother. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have a bit of a theme going on here. We've got mothers and grandmothers, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And this one, the mother has died. That's at the opening right. of the novel. And any uh, other? Well, Mavis Gallant, to the degree that any of these short stories set in Canada are autobiographical, her mother died when she was young. And I believe oh, that that's uh -huh. part of, a big part of these many of these stories. Right. So she was growing up in Montreal in the 30s and 40s. Yeah. So there oh. you go. Happy reading. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. This is great. Just and, like Christmas. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for watching. I have to go away and read now. There you go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>